Welcome. It's good to get the band back together again. We've got Pat. What's my rate, McMasters? Hey, Rick. <laughs> Jackie and Ruby with Century with Twenty One Arizona Jackie down there. So, <laughs> Yes. Hi. Hi, Pat. Am I doing the right <laughs> one there? Hi, hi Ruby. <laughs> hi. <laughs> See, Jackie, you're this oh, way. I went the wrong okay. way. Oh, I went the wrong way. I don't know how, how do they do that with the Brady Bunch? They, they they pulled it off very very easily. It's not as easy as it looks. No. Yeah. Well, they, yeah. they, had, they yeah. had professionals telling them where to look. So, yeah. So, so what we're going to do today is we're going to we're going to get a little little bit of a format that we're going to try and continue going forward. So I'm going to I'm going to quickly run people through the, the numbers. Pat, you're going to give us a update on kind of where rates are trending right now. Ruby's got some great information, not great information, but an update on the uh, real the Verity user? Foothills uh, water situation. Jackie's got some information on. Uh, uh, let's see, Ruby somehow I dropped off. Now you're back. So I keep disappearing, you guys. I'll say sorry ahead of time. Yeah. <laughs> and Jackie's got some new build information. So I'm going to run through some of the numbers really quick here that we've seen. It's been kind of interesting. But as uh, in every case, we are still sponsored by Red Hog Media. And they are servicing the entire valley here, not only for real estate, but small businesses. And they'll even do family photos for you. So if you order the services, which I highly recommend, put in Rick Helps in the discount code and you will get. So uh, here's the big thing. This is the big news of the week is look at the expired listings, how much that popped up. I mean, that is, you know, 6,200 and. 85 something like that now i don't know why it disappeared on me there but uh, i saw 2300 just over the seven day average where the highest i've seen before is about 700 so people just uh said well ah well we tried and they just they stopped what's interesting is i'm going to go back to that index here in a second well let me let me touch on this the cromford market index is a gauge between supply and demand and supply is not going up like it normally does. And demand is really low, but demand went up slightly in December versus November. And look what happened to the Cromford market index. It's it's approaching 100, which is considered a balanced market, even though it's incredibly slow. And you can see when it started falling, you, know, you can see there's some big gaps here. It came down at a pretty rapid rate starting in July. See those gaps between there? You can probably hardly see it, but we're coming back up now. Is that good news? Is that a trend? Well, it all depends. And we'll touch on that in a moment. Um, but when you look at it over the long term, that little blip up turns into a really tiny blip down here. So it's hardly noticeable when you look at it like this. But you can see how out of balance the Cromford Market Index got uh, during 2021, early in 2022. What's surprising now is how cancellations are just dropping like a rock. So mm -hmm. they're not canceling their listings. They're putting them on with probably shorter agreements with real estate agents, and they're just going ahead and letting them expire. So that's uh, that's kind of an interesting development to watch. And what we're seeing today is we've still only got 16,200 listings on the market. We have about 400 more new listings that have come on this week than have been coming on the previous two weeks, like about 20. Oh gosh, what was it? I'd have to go back and look at the number. I thought I could memorize it, but uh, <laughs> so, but the sales are still down low, like 1600 over a seven day period, but it's wow. still got new year's week in there. So once that washes out, I figure we'll probably be between that 2200 and 2400 range once again in sales and you think it's we'll get all... a better gauge of you know, just to jump in do you think we'll get a better gauge once obviously january we'll get all the holiday stuff out of the way because there's it's, uh, things always have a tendency to get a little bit out of out of whack with yeah the holidays. yeah yeah we just need it to wash out so and that'll happen on uh on monday then that th those numbers will be clean um so pr we'll probably tuesday because monday was a federal holiday think, so another question is uh so you basically a lot of people were just think just testing the market to see uh, they weren't serious or. Well, I think they, you know, you hardly 
really never know why a person puts a house up for sale, but they that looks to me like, and this is we're seeing this nationally, not just Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, well, things things are probably going to get really bad, so let's go ahead and put our house on the market now, and and uh, we'll sell it, and then after it didn't sell, they let the contract expire and just say, well, we'll just figure it out. And it's kind of a um, back to the fact that. 64% of the homeowners have a sub 4% mortgage. So they're going, if I can't sell it, I'm just going to stay put. I mean, yeah. it validates uh -huh. that quite well. And, uh, and as long as rates are sitting in the sixes like they are now, I don't see the sales number growing. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, so we're kind of at a standoff here. We're not getting a lot of new listings and, and Pat, I've still got my dollar tape to the, <laughs> Good. light over here and uh so um are we still going to see fives in the I'm first sticking with it. Still sticking, sticking with, with it <laughs> i know i mean today we saw obviously it was kind of like the last couple of days have been back back in the market you got the full all the traders back from vacation and whatnot but uh yeah today i mean the five and a half was up 19 basis points the 10-year treasury was down 10 basis points i guess there was some news Believe it or not, from the French, the French CPI came out of all the all the crazy things, and they said uh, it helped bonds improve. I don't know what exact number came out, but it was the French CPI that had some some pushover on today's market. But you know, we've been just kind of, as you can tell, we've just been kind of, you know, we had that great day in November, and we're just kind of, you know, muddling around here in this range um, with rates. I mean. Um, this is the price. I'm not going to, you know, change it around, but this is the price. You know, as rate as mortgage prices go up, rates go down. So this is kind of inverted based on what people normally see. But as you can tell, the prices on, on mortgage-backed securities have been kind of just kind of playing around with this range the last, you know, well, really last, you know, what, month and a half? And um, today we saw, I mean, we're getting these little ceilings. We have floors down. These little lines are floors and ceilings, but... Um, this is kind of this is kind of interesting. This stochastic they call it positive stochastic, uh, uh, you know, mo uh, uh, crossover. You saw it here, where you know it crossed over right here, and this is where you saw rates get better. You know, the price on um, bonds get better, and we're gonna st we're starting to see another crossover here, uh, right here. Is you know if it gets better, this this will go up, and these prices bond prices will go up. So we've got some room to go on there's gonna be some numbers coming off friday um about the bls uh bureau of labor St statistic numbers on uh, jobs report coming off friday but you know the feds re re actually released their numbers their, their meeting numbers or meeting notes and it didn't have any effect really no impact at all and usually it has a big impact on on the markets so um you know it can be a tough day but today it was a positive day so i mean it just seems as though things have kind of calmed down a bit because, like I said, normally when this Fed meeting numbers or minutes are released, you'll have we've had some crazy days, and it kind of just goes to show you the market's kind of digested all this stuff now, and we're not, you know, the last six weeks or six months ago the market was just, oh my God, it was trying to figure out a you know a level. Now it's kind of finding out a level. And, uh, you know, the Fed's confirmed that they're still going to be pushing, you know, they're going to be still focused on inflation. And, they're, you know, they're not going to, they're going to slow the pace, but they're going to still keep the, the pedal down on rates. So they're still focused on inflation. So it's like kind of like you said, I think more of the same. It just seems like the market's kind of muddling around here for rates in the market in general. Well, it used to be that if anybody said just a little bit of anything that uh, uh, there was, Everybody would overreact. <laughs> yeah. And so now, I mean, now it just seems like the market's kind of settling into this. Okay, here's, you know, this is this is exactly what you know. And uh, I think we're going to get more of that same the next, this next quarter. But um, Gary believes that uh, if the Fed numbers, you know, uh, their inflation numbers do sub are subdued, that we're going to see an um, improvement in rates here the next uh, next month or so. Okay, I'm gonna leave my dollar there. So it's right now six and a quarter rates are six and a quarter, six and three eighths, and you know we might see you know it'd be nice to see improvement in the high fives. So yeah, keep the dollar up there. Okay, I'm gonna do that, Ruby. 
You got news on what's going on in Rio Verde foothills? No water? Yeah, about a thousand, um, a thousand residents are out of uh, water right now uh, because the city of Scottsdale held to their um, their terms that they were going to cut them off from hauling water to them January first. So, um, feeling bad for those residents out there because you know their water costs are going to go up if right now one of their options is to get water from, for example, Apache Junction. And that's like a five hour turnaround time for uh, just a truckload of uh, 2,000 gallons of water. So, oh, I'm sorry. A 6,000 gallon truck is a two hour turnaround time and then wow. two hours to unload and an hour to fill. So it's, it's costing them, unfortunately, a lot of people out of water without, without water out there. And there's it's there's no cheap solutions either. So there's going to be some uh, going to be some pain out there for a while. And then you've got uh, some new homes still being built. So I don't know. It's going to be. Yep. There's some currently yeah. under construction yeah. right now. They're just halted. Yeah. 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 I mean, geez, what do you do? Yeah. But you know, they've known this was coming for a year. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe right. they just didn't believe the city of Scottsdale. But and just to recap, city of Scottsdale did it because. They send the water out there, and in their water conservation efforts, they they don't get any of that water back. It just goes into the ground. Whereas if they had a sewer yeah. system, it would, you know, do its thing and come back into the system. So, but that's not the scoop. So we're gonna have to watch that one and see what happens. Boy, I just uh, it's yeah. tough out there. That's Sad. tough. They, they never should have built that far. Now, you know, looking at all the other new developments, especially with Buckeye's big plans. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the people are going to take a really close look at that because everybody keeps saying, oh, well, we've got all this groundwater. There's only so much. Uh, um, so, but speaking of new builds, Jackie, what are you hearing out there? So we've actually been pretty busy with new builds. And as everybody knows, they were offering a ton of incentives, especially trying to get things under contract before the end of the year. I took a look at the MLS earlier, and with the coming soon and active, we were 16,000 something. I'm sure you know the number, Rick. Um, and then I honed in and looked at just vacant and built 22 or newer. And, you know, a lot of the builders don't put their homes in MLS. They only put the ones that are basic specs ready to go. There was, I believe, 2,800 of our 16,000 something active and coming soon that were new builds and um you know i'm seeing especially before january 1st they were offering you know they were offering incentives they were letting buyers know about but even a few times when i took some buyers out um you know they were staying in touch with me the the new build reps and there was for instance centex we were working on one with centex with a client of ours and they were offering $24,000 in lender concessions. You could use it toward buy downs. You could do a three, two, one, a two, one, a permanent. You could use it toward the price. You could do whatever you want with it. And then they had about 40,000 off um, from their base price. And Centex, the way they do it, they just build two, they have two color palettes. You get what you get. And so they kind of cut costs the way they do it. So they're able to give some really good incentives. But I saw great ones with Lennar, with KB. Um, I saw some great ones with Shea. Shea doesn't put their stuff in MLS. Um, they're, they're, you know, here's the thing. They got the room to do it. The, the costs to build have come back down. Love has come back down tremendously. And, you know, there's all this clickbait out there that the builders are going to go bankrupt, they're losing money, and that's not true. They have the room to do it because they had such huge, incredible spreads the last two years. And I think they're yeah. being a lot smarter this time. You know, last time they didn't pay attention. They learned their lesson. They've cut back permits that are at an all, you know, permits for new builds right now. They're at very low. And I think they're just trying to get rid of the inventory they have. You know, they had a lot of cancellations, but, you know, a year and a half, two years ago, they wouldn't even work with an agent. They were offering no co-brokes. They were canceling contracts on buyers because they could. Um, you know, they had crazy escalation clauses in there. And now it's just 
kind of, I mean, there's some good incentives and there's some really good buys out there with new builds. Well, let me and, ask you a quick question because um, it, you still can't go in and negotiate a price on a new build, right? I did. I did. It, that was it what depends I was on the say. builder, though, right? It depends on the builder, but Centex was one that, um, and I, I actually meant to, to say that with the rest of my Centex stuff, I forgot. So thanks for bringing that up. So Centex was offering the 24 in the concessions by using the Pulte lender. They're part, they're owned by Pulte now. Pulte bought them out years ago. And um, it's kind of a lower grade than Pulte. So we got to the bottom so dollar and I'm hearing myself a little bit. Sorry. That's why I keep yeah, hesitating. Yeah, here, yeah. Anyways, um, we got down to the bottom dollar and I was telling the rep, she kept reaching out to me saying, is she going to do something? Because we found the perfect house, perfect lot. And uh, I said, no, we got to get to this price. And we were about 12000 off. And so I said, go talk to your manager, see what you can do. Sure enough, the next day she calls me back. She's like, we can do it. So they're still doing it. They are doing it, I mean. But it depends on the builder. And yeah, because a lot of them don't want to touch their base price because they, they have don't. The, they, the same base price everywhere. And so, right. you, but there's a lot of people that feel like now's the opportunity to go in and get another 20 to 40 grand off. And you, you really can't. But when they yeah. do make their move on the base price, they make a big move across the board, too. And you're yeah. right. They don't want that sales price affected because they don't want to bring the neighborhood down. But they are, you know, here and there. They are negotiating some, but they've done it up front and they have the room to do it. So you're correct. You can't just go in and say, oh, I'm going to offer you 50,000 less and they're going to take, they're not going to take it. And yeah. I see that they're starting to stand firm a little bit more. Well, that's good to know. Cause I, you know, I don't um, work in the West Valley that much on new builds and uh, that's, and Maricopa's got the same situation. They, they've got a lot of builders down there, but I, uh, did write one for Lennar and Lennar was very firm and said, price is the yeah. price. Uh, we're right. not buzzing about mm -hmm. that. Um, and they right. don't have a design center. So we couldn't negotiate anything on the design center. And uh, so they, but they had just dropped the price by a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So, right. Can't I hope those that. buyers stick it to the builders. Cause uh, the last two years, this, the builders have been sticking it to the buyers. Horrible. Yeah, I hate the, Horrible. It goes around, comes around, yeah. goes around, comes around and, and, you know, so everything has its cycles and, uh, man, there's, you know, th those builders are getting really obnoxious the last couple of years, mm -hmm. you know, canceling, you said canceling <laughs> contracts and, you know, just being obnoxious, you know, you knew it was going to come back. Well, we're there. I'll tell you that, to them. Pat, the big problem that we're seeing now is people are, you know, they, they, they signed up to buy that new home. They're going to sell their home. And now the new home is either not selling or not selling wow. at the price they anticipated when they wanted to get the new home and now they're trying to get out of that contract and they're not, they're not going to give them their earnest money back. So oh, they, no. and some of these people are into them for like 75 grand, oh, yeah. you know, yeah, because they, they got design center upgrades, you know, and they, they want to deposit for half of what you, of, of what you were going to buy. And so they're, they're screwed. And so yeah. uh, probably it's the most active part of our community right now is the, uh, uh, real estate lawyers, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and what's sad too, is they fought so hard not to let agents represent buyers oh, yeah. and you know, took the co-brokes away from all the agents. Yeah. Basically told, totally. you, don't need the, you don't need the agent and buyers don't realize how much they really truly actually need an agent when they're doing buying a new home. I mean, yeah. they don't realize they have the ability. For instance, I was talking to KB homes. And this particular client wants to do an inspection on the home prior to going under contract. Because I said, if she goes under contract as an inspection, she finds something that you're not going to adjust, fix, or whatever. You're not going to let her cancel. She goes, well, we'll let her cancel, but we're going to keep her earnest deposit. I said, well, I mean, we want to do the inspections first. Oh, we don't do that. I said, yes, you do. And so I was like, call your manager. They'll tell you it's allowed. You can't stop her from doing it. So she called me yeah. back like 30 minutes later. Yes, you can do an inspection. But there's so many things that, you know, our contracts, at max, maybe 20 pages with all the d addendums and disclosures, their contracts are hundreds of pages. Oh, they're yeah. brutal. Yeah, they are brutal. So it's going to be, um, oh, hey. Uh, I went, meant to show show you guys. Did you see this storm that's bearing down on California today? Wow, I did not look at the news. To river thing. It's called a bomb cyclone. So they're getting tons of rain, but none of that rain 
is making it to us. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to ask you guys too about this because um, Cromford does a, a summary. And now this is hard to see. I don't expect anybody to see it, but it they're talking about here. Activity is very low across the board, but the market balance is normal. By that, we mean we have an equal balance between buyers and sellers. The trend is now moving in favor of sellers. Now, this is just for the past four weeks, right? And uh, But there are, uh, amid the murk, there are clear signs of improvement. Because sentiment is so poor, there is a psychological pressure to lower the prices. However, there's not much downward pressure coming from the market. If all trading was done by unemotional computers, prices would be stabilizing right now. I thought that was a very interesting comment. It is. And then it says, in the real world, strongly influenced by human emotions, and we've talked about that a lot here, prices fell sharply last month, losing 3.5% in the monthly medium and 25 based on the average price per square foot. However, sales prices are a trailing indicator, and these moves reflect the balance in the market in November when we experience a clear advantage for buyers. Leading indicators are looking more positive. The probability stems from interest rates less horrible than they were six weeks ago. Demand is starting to stabilize and even showing a few signs of a slow recovery. With new supply very weak, we are not witnessing a market crash. This is merely a correction with prices now just a tad lower than a year ago. So that was very interesting. And there's a lot of talk about good old Michael Burry who predicted the 2008 crash. And he actually said, he goes, yeah, we're going to enter in a recession. Uh, but he said that, uh, uh, with that consumer prices will continue to decline, possibly turning negative in the second half of the year. Who's that remind you of, Pat? Mm -hmm. Inflation yeah. peaked, he said, but it is not the last peak of this cycle. He's predicting the United States will enter a recession by the end of the year, leading the Federal Reserve to cut target interest rates and prompting low lawmakers to enact stimulus measures in turn causing another inflation spike and then the I last part of that, that is that pat will win his dollar <laughs> pat will win his dollar yes so yep. basically he's saying i don't know if i agree with him or not because i'm just going to watch this all play out that you know inflation is going to come down it's going to go negative and uh and we're going to be in a recession and then here comes uncle sam got to come in and start giving us all you know i hope start, not Start pumping the dollar again, you know, giving us some more money, and and we're going to get a second round of inflation. That would not surprise me. Uh, it didn't happen that way in the '80s, um, so I hope we don't we don't make that mistake. But uh, it there's I don't when I look at that Cromford number, um, I, I'm I'm kind of sitting back a little bit and going, okay, it took a turn, but let's let's see what we're looking at in, in February. Yeah. There's a lot of impasse right now. A lot of malaise. <laughs> yeah, but <you laughs> who know, used that? I mean, it was Jimmy just tells Carter. me that uh, something. You know, obviously something. I don't know. It, it seems like it's a pausing, but um, you know, I think people that are out there kind of sniffing around looking to buy. Maybe it is not the bad worst time to you know to be really kind of getting serious. Like you know, we've had a couple of people you know inquire. Yeah, I mean, it, there's first of all. Um, you don't need to be in a hurry no. and, and sellers and listing agents um, don't need to be in a hurry. Um, I mean, we had <laughs> one where, you know, when you send the counter offer, okay, give, give the buyer time to go over your counter offer, let him digest the numbers, let them get with their lender and talk scenarios. Don't send it over and then send me multiple text messages. Well, well, where are you? Well, that was, and I just experienced that. It was like, come on, we're, <laughs> yeah, we we're, did. Um, we're looking at things. So Pat and I were brainstorming for a long time. Well, what does this mean? How, what's it look like? And, and, uh, but I was just, it's not 2021 anymore. So you don't need to go, you know, I ended up replying saying, unless you have another offer tonight, there's no harm in waiting. Right. Right. Let's, let's all sleep on it. I just, mm -hmm. I thought of a great analogy. That'd be like me going, uh, 
you know, talking to a girl for the first time and uh, say, hey, hey, what do you think, huh? What do you think? Let's should, should you want again? Should want again? It's like <laughs> tap the brakes right? here. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> tap the brake. Hey, come on. What do you think, huh? Come on. Let's go. Let's go. It's like no. I'm gonna tap the brakes and I'm gonna digest our first date and see how it goes and go from there. And it oh. gives her time to move out of state and change her name. Yeah, and phone change her name and her address and everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My Not goodness. that that's ever happened to Pat. So. No, oh, no, no, my no. God. no. Anyway. I missed Just this the a... last two weeks. Huh? <laughs> I missed this the last two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh. uh, just to let everybody know, my my really, really, really good computer and camera are uh, in hiatus right now. Uh, it's being upgraded. It's here. It's all spread out on the kitchen table. And my son is going to, supposed to show up tonight and put it all back together for me. As Ruby disappears again, and uh, <laughs> I don't know, so, yeah, so uh, yeah, so so I even we'll, we'll, everything around me. Yeah, well, you know, you just you got gremlins over in that office. It's all I can yep. tell you. So, yep. well, folks, good to have everybody back. We'll do this again next week, and uh, hope everybody had a fabulous New Year's. And it's going to be a lot of fun watching these numbers. Yep. All right. Have a great Ruby's New Year, everybody. Ruby's gone again. She's coming back. All right. All right. See ya. <laughs> Wave there, Ruby. See you soon. I know. See you guys. Okay. Bye. Take care. Bye.